Hey, 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 today's conversation with you is going to be talking about living well in a difficult world slash living through blah days. What does it mean? Does it mean that my life has no meaning? Where am I in my walk on this earth? Why does it feel like I'm not having fun? I'm not feeling fulfilled. My days aren't sparked with something. What do we do with that? This episode is for you. Okay, if you've gone through any of that, if you are there, this episode is for you. And if you're not there, the cycles will come and go. All right, grab your wellness tea, a comfy chair, a friend, share this and subscribe. So before we get into my episode, I want to talk with you really quickly through this advertisement about you starting your podcast. Yep, you. I already know what you're saying. Everybody's podcasting and the market is overly saturated. Well, while there are many podcasters in this industry, there is no one with the voice unique like yours. And there is somebody that needs to hear what you have to say. In addition to that, Anchor is a very easy platform to get started, loaded with support, and you can also monetize your brand. This is how you get started. I want you to go to anchor.fm slash start. This is where you'll join me and the diverse community of podcasters. All right. So here we go. Chop, chop, get going. And I plan to hear your voice soon. All right. Now let's get to the episode. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Dot, dot, dot. You finished the song. You know it. Hey, Hey friends, community, family, visitors, first comers, welcome to first timers. Welcome to Holistically Speaking. It is your well woman practitioner, Lashanna Moore of Holistically Well. And I'm so thankful that you have joined this episode with me and that you browse this podcast as well if you haven't already. So you may have heard the um, airplane passing in the distance. I am sitting outside in my backyard. It has been a heaping hot summer here in the south, uh, but it's evening time. And uh, today is a beautiful day where the wind is blowing and I am gradually building out our backyard um, landscaping. Uh, Phase one is done and now we are doing, we're furnishing with patio furniture. So I've got my love seat out here and it's a beautiful day and uh, God has been good. We purchased our home back in November of 21 and uh, because it's so beautiful out here I wanted to have this talk with you while I enjoy beautiful nature and let my vitamin d production do its thing and get some serotonin and just some feel good enzymes happening and I hope that by the time of this uh, by the time we finish this talk that um, you are feeling refreshed and that your life is going to be aimed toward understanding living well because it's all about being well and being whole. Uh, At the time that I'm talking to you, I have not titled this episode yet. So I will not reference title as I talk. And I don't really like to move from uh, a title to determine my context or my content. Uh, I usually like to do the opposite. But I do, however, want to start with a quote that I shared on my Facebook um, a few days ago and it's really going to be the premise to help have this conversation uh, the the quote says the wrong fight is to try and make life easy life isn't easy the right fight is to live well in a difficult world and that was that's a quote from a therapist or counselor um shared by the client, Davy Blackburn, who has a heck of a backstory when it comes with grief and loss and life being restored. His counselor shared that with him. The wrong fight is to try and make life easy. Life isn't easy. The right fight is to live well in a difficult world. Um, I am ministering the word at my church on Sunday. My father-in-law's church and the word that God has given me is about suffering well. Interesting title, right? So I've been working on that this week, meditating on it. um, And in meditating on it, 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 of course, is just kind of taking me down a few roads of my own life. 
uh, in seasons of suffering and then relating it to um, particularly the Apostle Paul and uh, the quest to master suffering well. And that goes pretty deep. <clears throat> but uh, I'm sharing that quote because what I'm talking with us about today is understanding how to navigate our lives when there are days that just aren't good, that don't feel good, where you're where you have, are full of questions and frustration and confusion, whether, whether or when you have moments where you don't like your life. You don't like the way life is flowing. There is no wind, so it seems. There is no activity. There is no, uh, there's not a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of pomp and circumstance, hap- uh, cer- yeah, pomp and circumstance happening in life. I made some notes regarding this, and I want us to understand a few things when it comes to navigating this life. And like the counselor said, that the right fight, and I do agree that sometimes it is a fight, is definitely not a walk in the park. <laughs> life is not a walk in the park. Think about the different seasons and shifts and navigations of your own life. It's not been a walk in the park. And that's to assume that the park is easy breezy. Because some parks, based on where you go, are like... um uh, scavenger hunt or like landmines or like obstacle courses. So I agree with it. I agree with the reference of saying the right fight. The right fight is to live well in a difficult world. And we go through these periods where we don't like our lives. And so that's the focus of this episode is what do I do when I don't like my life? And I think the way that I want to start in sharing is that there are going to be days where we just have regular days. There are going to be days that are not so fun, not so good. There's nothing spectacular about them. And I want you to realize that, understand it for what it is, and let it be. And where we get caught up and confused and flustered is when we observe so many highs around us and we feel like at all times those same highs should be happening in our lives or that there should be a high happening in our lives. And of course, no place does that better than the digital world the World Wide Web, the internet, or the TV, mass media, media in general does that. We see all of these announcements. We see all of these special news breaks. We see all of these congratulatory things happening. We see people releasing this, announcing that, doing this, traveling here, accomplishing this, making that, presenting this, and and all of these different things from the smallest thing to the largest thing. And psychologically, what is going to happen, and, you know, it's not even about being a strong person or a weak person. Psychologically, what's going to happen is that you are going to internalize that information. And after repetition, after so much repetition, you're going to start looking at your own life. Or based on where you are in your life, it's going to cause you to compare. And the reality is that we're going to have some normal days. We're going to have some blah days. We're going to have some days that just require us to navigate through them. And then we're going to have days where things are flourishing. We're going to have thriving days. All of these days are valid and are a part of living. What taught us that every day was going to be a flood of joy and abundance and happiness? In that term, happy, happiness, one of the things that we start complaining about um, when we're not pleased with our lives is that we're not happy. The danger in that is that happiness is not the qualifier for a qualitative life. And we have to be careful not to chase after happiness. Happiness is not something to achieve. Happiness is not a destination. Happiness is 
um, an emotional gift through life. Happiness is a state of mind. Happiness is something that within our own individual ability and capability, we seek to embrace. We seek to maintain, which means that it is our job. It's not anybody else's job. It's not any other thing's job. It's not the excitement of a new location or a new job or a new relationship or something or that we have acquired in our lives. We have to be very careful that we are not idolizing life. Life is not to be worshipped. It's not to be idolized. What do I mean by that? Life is not to be something to to not. Life is not something to be looked at as an acquisition, as a video game to like Pac Man to eat as many little marbles and ghost as possible or whatever the little trinkets and rewards are to get as many points as we can. We need. We need to be living with a healthy amount of serotonin, tritophan, a a healthy adrenaline. We need oxytocin, which is the chemical transfer of touch and embrace and love and affection that is shared, whether it's platonic or whether it's romantic. We do need those things, but we cannot idolize happenings to determine the quality of life. Otherwise, life can easily be destroyed, right? And then because life is about balance, I'm thinking about this message that I'm sharing Sunday and suffering well. Doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound like a fun, inspirational message. It doesn't sound like something that's going to leave you on a high and make you want to shout or whatever. It will definitely end inspirational. (laughs) But there is um, an ultimate point in understanding how to suffer well and the importance of that. And it goes beyond feeling So suffering well goes beyond feeling and emotion, and it goes beyond circumstance and situation. It's more so about the spiritual mentality when you are in a place of being in life. And that's one reason why we can't just be happy all of the time. Now with saying that, let me also say that I do not subscribe to the idea that you have to struggle and suffer for everything in life. I am not a proponent of that thought. But I do believe that if our perspective and our desire for life is anchored in the right place, meaning my desire in life and my perspective in life is to live well in a difficult world, is to think well, to eat well, to live well, to breathe well, to move well, to navigate well, to be guided well, to present well, to sleep well, to heal well, to be well. My state of being in this world, whether I am in a static or dynamic place, whether I'm in an isolated or an open place, whether I am moving or still, If my mindset is to be well and to live well in a difficult world, then I understand and I will better embrace that I will not be, quote unquote, happy all of the time. There is a balance in this world. And this is really the stuff that maturity and understanding um, is made out of. It is that point uh, where we embrace that both things must be the good and the bad. Pleasure and pain, light and dark, sun and moon. And so we we do have to allow this state of balance to be in our lives. And in realizing that we also take joy, joy is not the same as happiness, We take joy in recognizing that the spirit of my life is filled with gratitude, patience, um, grace, humility, celebration, 
soberness in my mind and my emotions, flexibility, being able to maneuver and, and, and shift when needed. Uh, I have, oh my God, the last few years have had to really work at recognizing just how not in control I am of things that I would like to think I'm in control of. Of course, nothing taught me that deeper than loss, but really in in my overall world, the lesson of understanding that I am not in control. And because of that, I have to be open to the seasons of grief or the seasons of blah days, the seasons of just letting this be a regular day, the seasons of or the days of realizing that I cannot hyper positive my way out of certain things. I have to um, respect that life is and that there are going to be moments of just getting through. So I want you to think about the nature of your mentality. We cannot chase butterflies in this world. And when I think about that, I think about one of the um, analogies or one of the examples, I guess I can say, I think about is marriage. Marriage and the dating season is supposed to do what it does. It's supposed to make you euphoric. It's supposed to give you butterflies. It's supposed to solidify your love for that person. It is supposed to confirm um the bond and the chemistry and the suitability. Don't stop at chemistry. You can have chemistry with a lot of people, just like Teray says, Teray Roberts said. You can have chemistry with a lot of people. So it's not just, just about chemistry. But the dating, courting time, whatever term you choose to use, is supposed to solidify those things. It's supposed to bring you all of the giddies um, while it also secures the character and the personality of the person that you want to be with because when you get married and this is provided for those of you who desire marriage everybody doesn't but when you come together with a person you will not feel like that every day but guess what not feeling like that every day does not dissolve or diminish the love you, you have come together for process to solidify those things and then after you say yes we are doing this for life. Yes, we are in this together. Then you begin to navigate life well together in a difficult world that is going to bring seasons of all kind of dynamics. And so when we think about navigating life well, I think about that um, example. I think about that reality. Now, this is not when I in this talk of... Um, understanding that life is not always going to be on a roller coaster high. It's not to say that we shouldn't be void of faith and expectation and ambition. And it's not to say that that those gifts should not be threaded into our day. We do need to speak positive to our day. We do need to have confessions and declarations and affirmations. But within that, we also need to honor the fact that there are going to be days uh, where we just navigate through them. And, you know, it just may not be a highly rewarded day. And what I'm hoping is that those who really need to hear that so that they can kind of settle down a little bit. Um, your takeaway is to be encouraged to know that you're not behind, to be encouraged to know that what's for you will be, that you're not going to lose what's for you, uh, for you to, to be affirmed in who you are and that you have purpose and place in this world. That's what I want you to walk away with. Um, understanding that um, variables will change, content will change, places, people, and things will change, but your relevance in this world and the work that you do or the work that you will do matters and is needed. Every one of us have something that must exist in this world, and you can be full of purpose and still have a blah day. So I will leave a few pointers or a few notes um, 
of things to consider when when you're having um, just a regular old day, just a blah day. There are, there are some things that we can do to make sure that our mind is in a balanced place, that our thoughts are steadfast and that um, we're not allowing depression to sink in, that we're not isolating ourselves, that we uh, stop taking part in things that um, bring us joy and, and that add to our happy jar. Different ways to find uh, contentment is to uh, learn something new, um, challenge your mind, cha- challenge your neuroplasticity, and um, learn something new. Take on something that you thought was once not your vibe, you know, uh, whether it's a hobby or taking a trip or a language or um, diversify, diversifying your friend circle or your um, colleague circle, your associate circle, um, learning to live through wisdom and not just sensationalism. Realizing that um, you can create moments of of joy that you can create comedy for yourself if y'all knew how many times i am a a comedian for myself throughout the course of a day sometimes one thing i am gonna do is make sure i laugh because one thing life is gonna do is make sure i cry (laughs) so think about ways that you can be refreshed uh change up your environment um today well this evening I um I try to wrap up at a at a certain time now. And there are some times that I am working late, like today being one of those days. And I changed up the environment. I moved from the office to outside to the backyard. Um sometimes go travel. Go uh, get in your vehicle and drive to another location and just park and read a book or um, think of ways that you can move about, move around. It doesn't have to be a drastic thing. The ways that you can move about. Um, I'll leave this with you and I'm going to get ready to wrap up. Um, I don't know if any of you read The Atlantic. I love um, to read a lot of their articles. And they had an article about creating praise uh, for pointless goals. Like just creating some pointless goals, you know. No, no lofty checklist, no, no checklist that are centered around increasing your finances or whatever acquisition you have, acquiring things. I've used that word a few times um, within this uh, conversation. Uh, achievements that aren't directed toward anything productive per se. Oh, let me insert this real quick. Volunteering. Oh, go volunteer somewhere. If if your your happy jar, your your joy, if your happy jar is low, your joy factor is is almost anemic. Go and help somebody. Let me tell you what service and servanthood will do for your joy factor. Find you somebody to encourage to uplift, to help, go volunteer somewhere, join a charitable organization or go help somebody who you see doing something good. I just had to insert that real quick. Okay, so the Atlantic article, I do encourage you to go and check it out. It was written, was it June of this year, 2022? June or July of 2022. Um, It's called In Praise of Pointless Goals. These achievements aren't about productive self-improvement. They're designed to make the pursuit of joy a deliberate practice. In July of last year, a grown man pulled on a giant bear costume and set out to walk across the country. He was 33 years old. From L.A. to New York, he went. I'm going to paraphrase. I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to uh, paraphrase and just try to summarize it. You got to read it, though. And his idea or his goal was to do something fun, to do something different, to make people laugh, to be an influencer of just meaningless happiness and laughter. Um, he sold health insurance, and so he made the decision to traverse the nation on impulse. And while he did, he raised money for five charities um, and eventually conceived a purpose to spread joy throughout this walk. 
Um, it was just his own personal adventure. So uh, the article goes on to talk about cultivating pointless uh, goals. And I want you to think about something fun that you can do. I am always talking about adult recess. Ah, and speaking of which, if you are in Houston, look up Sharia Quarles. She has a wonderful organization called Redo Recess, and it is recess for adults. She has a mobile bus that she has um, that she's had transformed for adults to enjoy fun play. And I think that is something that you want to look into for your lives. Returning to fun, childlike fun. Something that I am doing the last two quarters of this year, and we'll see if I continue it in 23, um, is going back to my first love, which is performance. And I had said the last of 21 that I was going to make sure in 22 that I got back into performing arts, whether it was hobby related, whether it was on the side, whether it was doing production work, because, you know, I do production design as well. Uh, whether it was going to be performing. And so um, got a call from one of the um, pro- professional theaters here in, in the Southwest. Um, the number one, I have to say, African American Theater of the Southwest Ensemble Theater. And they were like, hey, where have you been? We want you to be a part of this production. Um, and the timing was right. And so I'm looking forward to getting back on stage. That's going to be my big uh, joy factor and fun factor. So consider these things. How can you reset? How can you refresh? How can you make a pointless, happy goal for yourself? In what part of your mentality do you need to reassess about life? And what will you do on those days that life is just blah, um, that you just have a day that didn't have any highs or lows, you went through it, you live through it, and you go to sleep to live the next day? Um, because you're going to live with plenty of inspiration. Your life is going to be filled with so much good, so much joy, so many highs. You're going to have them. They're going to be beautiful cycles in your life. But be balanced in living this life. So let me close out with this um, quote again. The wrong fight is to try and make life easy. Life isn't easy. The right fight is to live well in a difficult world. And I want to say live well in your mind, in your thinking, in your perception, in your behavior, in your living, in your healing, in your conversation, in your being and your doing. This has been your well woman, practitioner Lashana Moore. Remember, be well and be whole.